This video is for anybody suffering with alcoholism. I hope it helps. What's up, YouTube? It's me, Mikey. How you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good myself. A little bit tired. Got a sleep aid in me. Gonna be heading to bed here in a little bit. I should be at bed right now. It's after midnight. I gotta be up at 6 o'clock. But, can't sleep. Um, so, decided to do a little vlog. Hopefully it's not too long. But it probably will be. <laughs> I wanted to talk about alcoholism. Because I just recently gotten sober. And I wanted to say, alcoholism fucking sucks. Alcohol... To a certain extent, is is okay. But when you're depressed and you're drinking and you know you're just doing all sorts of stupid shit, it's not cool. So I'm gonna start from the beginning. When I was real young, I had my first drink when I was about. 13 or so my brother he hooked me up and I didn't like the taste at first I was like ugh ugh you pissing this bro what the fuck so I got the brilliant idea to go downstairs and get a big bowl of applesauce and put a bunch of cinnamon and sugar in it and go back upstairs and my mom she was probably like what are you doing? oh just gonna go upstairs and you know work on my homework cause I'm, I'm the good son yeah Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. But that's what I did. I went upstairs and I would drink. I was like, yuck. Applesauce. Mm -hmm. Drink. Ugh. Applesauce. And so on and so on. But I didn't really get hammered. I just did it just to... just to drink it, just to be cool. And let's go ahead and fast forward a few years later. I'm, you know, going to parties, you know, when in my teenage years. And I'd have occasional beers here and there, but I never really got hammered because I needed to drive home so I'd have like one or two and then relax for a little bit just kinda hang out and then eventually go home and I was really shy as a kid really shy and I found out later in life there's such a thing called social phobia which I do believe I have I was never diagnosed with it but yeah So, there was one night, one party, I'm going to share this video on Facebook, so all my friends from high school, if you were at this party, you'll know what party I'm talking about. It was my first official night of getting hammered, <laughs> getting fucked up. It was the end of the year junior year of high school and we had this party out in the boonies and I was one of the first ones to show up and they're like Mike free beers over there help yourself I'm like cool start knocking them down I don't know my limit you know I'm just like 
One beer. More free. There's a god damn. You got a lot of beer, bro. <laughs> so I better start drinking if nobody else is gonna come. Yeah, yeah, fuck, nobody's here. <laughs> so I start knocking down. And I'm like four or five beers in. And then people start showing up, and I'm all like, Hey, man, hey, hey, hey. what's up, buddy? It's Joe, yeah, man. How you doing? What's up, girl? <laughs> it made me not shy, and that's what I liked about it. And it made me a happy person and growing up my idols were Motley Crue, Ozzy and Guns N' Roses so yeah I was pretty much destined to be an alcoholic and that party was nuts man I just got so fucked up I was like hey man can I have a little bit of cigarette? It looks a little funny. It, it looks like a different sort of cigarette. It doesn't really look like a cigarette, but you're smoking it. I, yeah, it's kind of small. Huh, that's... Uh, Okay, that's, that's fine. <laughs> and again, I don't want to condone that uh, this is a, a good thing. Wait till you're 21 to drink. Or if you are drinking, if you're a teenager and you're drinking, um, you know, hit me up with a message saying, Hey, Mikey, how do I stop this shit? Uh, maybe I can help you out. But anyway, yeah, I got totally hammered that night. And ended up decorating somebody's truck. Blah. <laughs> Is, yeah, I just, I had to have drank, like, uh, at least a 12-pack, 14 cans, I don't know. Enough to black out. Enough to die, <laughs> for one. And somehow or another, I made it through it. Next, ne next day, I had the worst hangover, and I was just like, what is this feeling all about? This fucking sucks. Anybody got a, an Advil? <laughs> it was rough. So, fast forward to when I'm in college. I went to college for a little bit. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to college because... College kids get fucked up, and they have a good time. And by this time, I was getting in a band, Flying Cactus Knuckles. And we didn't really drink as a band. We we wanted to make it. We wanted to be the next big thing. And that band kind of went its own separate ways. The bass player had to go to another school, so... I kept in touch with the drummer, and I still do to this day. And uh, then I had another band, Griffin, and that band, we would go to parties and play and get hammered, fucked up, just drink until you black out. And I was always that guy that wanted to be the center of attention. I wanted to, to let everybody know that if somebody's going to get fucked up tonight, it's going to be Mikey. Better believe it. 
And I did. Am I proud of it? No. Uh, can I change it? No. If I had the chance to go back and change it? No. Because it made me learn from my mistakes, eventually. Um, and in college, I was living at the dorm. And a lot of nights of just getting totally, totally drunk. And just waking up in the bathroom. I'm like, dude, how come somebody didn't pick me up and put me in bed? Like, dude, you were so fucked up. We'd you, we just left you there. You were yelling at everybody and telling us to fuck off and whatever else. So. But. When I was in college, there was one girl in my life that I knew her for a while. She was a, a good friend, a friend of a friend. And that's what I, our relationship was. It was just friendship. And... She was having trouble with her uh, boyfriend at the time. And I said, well, if you want to talk about it, we can hang out some night and, you know, uh, you know, it's up to you. I wasn't trying to actually make a date or anything. But uh, at this time in the dorms, my roommates were going back home on the weekends and so I had the dorm all to myself and I said hey just come on over we can you know talk about it if you want if you don't want to that's fine and so she did she came over and she uh, ended up being my wife years later so or a year later or two I'm not sure anyway uh, yeah I was like so shy back then uh, she actually had to ask me to marry her cause I that I couldn't you know even bring myself to do that I, I never even asked her out I just leaned over and kissed her that was my way of asking her out. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I know. Oh. But yeah, she never drank. She went to the parties um, when I was in the band with Griffin. She went to those parties. But... She would just kind of be, you know, there to take care of me, I guess. Uh, why she stuck around with me, I don't know. I still don't know, because it got worse after college. Um, oh, there's another thing that happened in college, too. One night, I decided, I had never seen the movie... The Shining. And I've heard good things about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch that movie. It's about time I watch it. Because I like horror movies. And since it's highly rated and all this, I'm like, well, it, it ought to be good. I like Stephen King, so it should be good. So I decided to go and get a big bottle of vodka, sit down on the couch and drink and watch The Shining. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, an experience. I was like, what the... 
What the hell is going on with that that bunny? What, what is that furry bunny? Dude, this movie's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that or this is fucking me up. I don't know. Yeah, you don't even need to be fucked up to watch that movie. It's already fucked up enough. Anyway, fast forward to when she actually asked me to marry her. So we tell everybody and I go out for uh, my bachelor party, of course. Hammered, just beyond belief, just free drinks all night, puking my brains out, whatever. And my dad was there, and that's an experience. Getting totally fucked up and having your dad be in there, and you're on stage at the strip club getting your underwear ripped up by a stripper. You look over, and your dad is laughing at you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> and also, I'd like to say sorry to my father-in-law. I know you weren't invited, but I I had no say in the invitation, so I had heard later that you were kind of upset that you didn't get to go. So if you're watching this video, I'm sorry. Um, but it's probably a good thing that you didn't come because you would have been like, no, hell no, no, this kid is not going to marry my daughter, no, and no. <laughs> but that was just the tip of the iceberg, really. I shouldn't say the tip of the iceberg, it's, it escalated worse. There's more of an iceberg, I guess. Because, uh, get married... And there's a lot of other stories, you know, I've been known to, after we got married, I'd been known to do all sorts of stupid drunken shit. Um, but I was the guy that wanted to be alive at the party, you know, just drink and have a good time, make everybody laugh. I we played strip poker. I went outside naked one time. <laughs> Stupid shit. Um, yeah. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> and, um, will I go back and change any of that? Well, when I went outside naked, it was in the middle of winter. Um, so I probably would have waited until... You know, July, I guess. <laughs> but, I guess uh, one of my lowest points would be when my wife almost left me because of booze. I, uh, I quit college because I got into college algebra and it was just too much and... I was broke and I was like, I need a full-time job. So I went and got a full-time job and the full-time job at first really got to me. Um, I didn't know how to handle it. It was a different type of a job for me. I was used to working with the public and various odd jobs. But this one would piss me off, and I'd come home pissed off, and I'd want a six-pack or a 12-pack, and just forget about the day, and I was just like, fucking job, fucking, fucking, fucking. And there was one time when uh, we started getting credit cards, and we were maxing them out, and lines of credit through the bank, we were maxing them out, and I know, it's my own dumb fault, I know, but 
I was young, dumb, and full of dumb, so. I was, I don't remember if we were having an argument or what, but I'm pretty sure it was about money. And I just drank, I just drank and drank and drank. And I ended up passed out in the basement. Um, and uh, I come through and my dad wakes me up. Turns out my wife drove up to where my parents live. And she's like, you guys, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm about ready to leave him. And why she didn't leave me, you know, long before then is beyond me. Like, I put, like, there's a lot of drunken times. I know I'm rambling on and on, but I'm just trying to give you the, the, the way alcohol progressed in my life. It just got darker and darker, basically. Um, I wasn't no longer the silly drunk. I was not the life of the party. I was the guy that would come home and drink and be bitter and pissed off and drink some more and I just sit in my own self-pity and drink and just be pissed off. <laughs> And turns out that night she said that it was in December and then in January she had told me that she was pregnant. So had she have left me, yeah. It, I probably probably wouldn't be here right now. So, um, having a baby, um, I held back on the drinking around the baby. Of course, um, I didn't want to be that guy that you know smacking the baby around and all this shit. Cause I don't believe in that. But. I still continued to drink and but I would I started to make it where it was a thing I would do on the weekends and um, we had another band going he manufactured hence the name he manu Mikey and there were times when the band wanted to come over and play and I was pissed off about money or the job or whatever else and I was like I don't feel like it guys and they're like it's jam night we're, we got we got to practice like I'm thinking to myself practice for what <laughs> we don't have no fucking gigs we're not on tour so I check my minutes here uh, sorry got my contacts in okay we're good it's the longest video. Um, and there were times when the band would come over and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get drunk and then I can't play and then they're going to get pissed off and leave. So that's what I did. I just started knocking them down. And I don't know, I'd have like four in me or so and they'd come over and like, you ready to jam? I'm like, yeah, 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 that's jam. That was my drunken state <laughs> back then. Uh, it was no longer, oh, hey, man, yeah, yeah, hi, how you doing? No, it was more of a, yeah, that's jam, let's do it, let's go. And uh, we did write a lot of good songs, though. And there were times that I was sober when we played. 
Um, a lot of times. We had a lot of good times in that band. And I'm proud of all the bands. Um, but anyway, getting back to the booze. Getting to more recent years, I, uh... I didn't want to be the guy that was getting really shit-faced all the time because my daughter was getting older and let's see she was about two and I was just, I didn't know how to handle a two-year-old and I started smoking and I was still drinking but I started just drinking like a 24 ounce you know something to because I was working two jobs and I wanted to just come home and chill and instead of getting fucked up I just would buy one of the big cans and but not the light shit I'd, I'd buy like uh, uh, something one of the harder drinks you know and it was enough to get me Nice and buzzed and tired, and I'd fall right asleep, and that was that. And then I got a, a new drink that came along. I'm not going to name what it is because I'm writing a song about it. And the name of the song is going to be called My Poison of Choice. As it was, it was My Poison of Choice. It, it was just enough alcohol to get me super feeling good and I just felt happy I guess and fast forward to recent years mostly this year I guess uh I was drinking this drink pretty much like every other day and then it got to the point where it was like every day because we um, were just having a lot of issues with my daughter because um, she's got epilepsy and ADHD and so she's bouncing off the walls and and the bills with the epilepsy and the ADHD is is driving me cuckoo and I've got all these bills piling up and I don't know how to handle it and so I'm just like drink and that's all I want to do when I come home from work I would, like this year I all I want to do is just come home go into the bedroom play my guitar and drink and just get away from everybody and I neglected my wife and I neglected my kid. I didn't spend enough time with them. I didn't help my wife out with uh, suppers and that. And to her, I apologize. To my daughter, of course, I apologize. And fast forward into now, well, about. Uh, a little over two weeks ago, I don't remember if it's two weeks, uh, right on the money, but there was, uh, two times when I had this drink where something pissed me off really bad. Um, I'm not gonna go into details about it, but, you know, this drink, it doesn't, like, get you totally hammered where you're puking your brains out, but it gets you pretty messed up. But I'm not. It gets you to the point where you you can fall asleep pretty pretty good. Anyway, uh, so I'm in the bedroom trying to just jam and chill, and my wife is fighting with my kid about homework or whatever else and uh, the first night I think it was about that I don't know I can't remember but I went outside and I remember just being 
so pissed off and I was raking the leaves and I was cursing out the leaves and I was cursing out the tree for dropping the fucking leaves so that I got a fucking rake and then I got mad and I threw the rake and then I I threw the rake again and then I started taking the rake and beating the tree with it and I was outside yelling uh, I was just scary it was like I wasn't drunk. I was like something else took over, I guess. And then a couple days later, it happened again. And I'm inside screaming and hollering and you know, just getting pissed off and my daughter saw me getting pissed off and she's telling me to calm down my dad's or my dad my wife's calling me to calm down I'm like I can't I fucking physically cannot calm down right now I just cannot do it um like I said I won't go into details about what pissed me off but I was pissed and the next day I was at work, it was a Friday, I'll never forget it. Um, I got these lyrics for this song, My Poison of Choice, in my head. It just came to me, like the song just started writing itself. And I thought about the night before and everything I said, everything I did, and I just felt so, so shitty about it. And I got to thinking about my wife and my daughter, and I'm thinking to myself, what was, what if the tables were turned? Like, what if it was her being this way? I would have left. <laughs> I would have left a long time ago. So, I gotta check my minutes here. Oh, about 10 minutes left. Um, looking to see how many minutes I have on my camera. Jesus Christ, we're about 32 minutes in. Jesus, damn, Mikey. Just talking up a storm. You gotta go to bed, son. But I do hope this video helps somebody. Um, anyway, this... Friday, the day after, I uh, I had a, an appointment to go down to the uh, local, it's called BioLife Plasma Center, and donate some plasma, something I do, and um. I had called my wife earlier. Well, actually, I think I called her when I was in the parking lot at BioLife. And I called her and I said, I gotta stop. I, I can't, I can't do this no more. Something, I mean, when I drink and I get pissed off, something else is happening. Like, and I'm afraid to have a drink. I mean, that's, that's a weird feeling. So, yeah, I, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't really hammered. I was, I had one drink and something set me off and here I am in a violent, frantic state of mind and, and that's the last thing my kid needs to see right now and my wife. Um, so this Friday, after I donated, I, uh, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go to the mall and pick up a book. And I'm just going to read for a little bit. I just need some time to clear my head. And actually that day, uh, I called AA and I talked about going down there and speaking. And I haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking about it. 
Um, but yeah, we're about two weeks in, no booze, and feeling really good about it. Like good things are happening actually. Um, got some overtime. Uh, I got a text from a job that I had uh, earlier in the year. It was a part-time job and it paid good. And me and this guy talked about um, possibly having me work again next year because it's a seasonal job. And so I was like getting really ecstatic. I was like, like things were falling into place. Like, this is great. Uh, that was one of the, the main things that was torquing me off was money. When I was drinking and getting really crazy, money was a big part of it because my wife is going on unemployment right now because she has a seasonal job as well. So currently she's on unemployment. And what else? I, I was. I was just getting depressed because I didn't know if I was going to have enough money to pay for all of Brooke's medical bills and all her doctor appointments coming up and, and I just wanted to forget about the day and just drink. But no, uh, that Friday night I went to the mall, I got a book and that's what I've been doing. And things have just been falling into place. I've been getting a good YouTube vibe. I've been wanting to do YouTube videos and I've been wanting to play the guitar again. And actually, when you play guitar when you're not drunk, you play a lot better, believe it or not. <laughs> so, I hope this video helped somebody out. Um, I'm going to leave some links in the description below if you need help. Um, I don't know what I'll leave. Uh, probably AA, of course. and. Any phone numbers, uh, I don't know of anything off the top of my head right now, but, or if you want to contact me, just send me a message or comment, and uh, we can talk about it. If you want to talk privately, um, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, two weeks in, and I'm feeling great. Right now I'm a little sleepy because it's time to go to bed, I think. Oh yeah, it's after one o'clock. <laughs> That's another problem I have uh, is insomnia. So, gotta go get my five hours of sleep. <laughs> so yeah, I hope this video, again, helps somebody. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching. And if this video helped you in any way, if you're an alcoholic, Pass it on to somebody else that's an alcoholic, or uh, just comment down below, or just do whatever. But me, I'm going to go to bed. So, till next time, rock on, bitches. Alright guys, I know that was a pretty long-winded video, sorry about that. So, congratulations if you made it this far. I wanted to point out that I have a secondary channel. It's called Meet the Boyus. It's me, my wife, and my kiddo. And it's just a vlog channel. It's not a daily vlog channel. It was going to be, but... Ah, uh, that's just too much work for me to do. So, uh, if you feel like checking that out, go ahead and check that out and subscribe. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel. And yeah, we'll see you next time.